Good, Josh. Good afternoon. How are you? Just a short stumble down I thought if you got it. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Well, the first question is, do you uh, do you like more of a latte with a thin delicate foam or are you cappuccino with something thicker and fluffier? Sweet, so let's, uh, let's make a latte. You have your milk pitcher handy? Okay, let's go and grab that and uh, let's see the cup you're gonna work with too. Excellent. Perfect, that's about 10 ounces I'm gonna guess. Great. So first thing we wanna do, Josh, we want to make sure you dose just the right amount of milk. So if you look at your pitcher, there's that little spot there where the where the yep, where the spout meets it. If you put your finger there, you want your milk to be just about a finger's width below. Yeah, it's not rocket science, so just kind of get, you know, close enough. And we all have different size fingers, so there's a lot of flexibility there. Okay, so next thing you're gonna do is with your machine, you always wanna start with just a little purge of the steam wand, kick any of the water out of there that may have uh, built up. And, and you said we're going delicate foam, more latte-ish, right? Awesome. All right, so the next thing we want to look at is positioning the steam wand. So I don't have a steam pitcher in my house, so I'm gonna have to draw pictures. Hope that's okay with you. All right, so here, here's your steam pitcher. You're looking down at it from the top. And I want you to go ahead and rest that steam wand right against the spout. And just put that, put the tip right in the middle and you don't wanna to be too deep into it, just deep enough so that you can still see where the tip is screws on to the, to the steam wand. All right, now the middle is a really bad place to stay. So I want you to take your pitcher and just tilt it one way or the other. Not quite to the wall, just a little bit off center. That's gonna give you a lot of torque with the machine. So it'll really get a really good spin going. And that's a good whirlpool. All right, Josh, you look like you may have danced ballet way back in the day, long ago. Remember your positions, first position, second position, you get, exactly, so you get two positions with this. Right now you're in first position. Second position, you're just going to take your milk pitcher and you're just gonna lower it down a little. 
so that the tip of the wand dances on the top of the milk and makes that little noise. That's second position. Every time you hear that's a little more air getting tossed in, it's a little more foam. Since you like it light and delicate, you're just gonna do maybe a second or two. Then go right back to first position and just hold it there. It's pretty quick and you don't need to move it a lot. The less you move it, the better it is. And uh, let's go for it. Now, a quick note, when you turn it off, I just want you to keep your hand on the pitcher. When it gets just kind of warm where you're like, yeah, that's cozy, go ahead and shut it off. Let's see what it does. That's all good. So now before you pour, take your milk pitcher and just kind of swirl it. That's gonna just kind of give it a little further polish. Do you see any bubbles in there? Yeah, if you see them, give a couple taps on the counter. And then a little swirl. Sweet. All right. Now here's the real here's the real easy part. You're gonna take that foundation. If you find that your milk is coming short in your cup, you add more cold milk, cold milk to start, right? If you're wasting milk, don't pour as much. If it's coming out too hot, back it off a little. If it's uh, super bubbly, give it less. If you want more foam, a little more. And that's going to get you going. Good, found, good foundations, and we build up from there. I mean, if you want to just work on your milk, you don't need to use an espresso. If you want to work on latte art, it helps to have that contrast. So either um, some espresso, some chocolate, or even some food coloring. I like a little splash of food coloring too. Sometimes you can get the same kind of effect. Um, no, I was, I was gonna say, and typically the thing that ruins most milks is if it goes too hot. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Now, and I also know a lot of people out there, you know, Cow's milk is the standard. We use the standard whole milk in our cafes. Uh, most cafes do. Um, as you drop fat content, you're going to have stiffer foam, um, that higher protein ratio. If you go into like what they call the breve, we're using half and half some heavier creams. It's going to be trickier to get some of that some of that foam, just because there's so much fat. And if you're going with uh, dairy alternatives, almond milk, coconut, uh, oat. Um, the same basic principles apply. You just have to get better at it. Just have to practice more. Yeah.
Sweet. Well, hey, let's um, let's give you some time to practice for the week, and then we'll uh, come back and look at your latte art. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, if you really want to know what perfect latte art is, let me show you real quick. Um, this is the best latte art you're ever going to see in your life. Called an empty mug. Which means if someone drank it all, you did it right. All right, there you go. You got it. <laughs> That's right. I'll be back Friday. And I forgot what I'm doing. What, what, what should we do on Friday? <laughs> what, what day is it? <laughs> Perfect. We can just mirror press. Yeah. Yeah, just ship it down my way. I'll talk to Bob. All right. It's good to see you, man. Soon enough. When it's safe, when it's appropriate. All right. Okay, everybody. Thank you.